Hi again, this is Diane. Okay, what we're going to do today is we're going to complete our table runner uh, with, and I'm going to show you how to utilize that 5 8 inch uh, binding foot, the FOF machines. Okay, so, but first things first, we still have to get our quilt ready uh, uh, in preparation for that binding. So, what I'm doing is I'm evening up my, or squaring up my edges. So I'm just holding my ruler along the edge of the table runner. Oops, got to And then I'm just cutting along that edge to get that uh, nice straight edge that we need for when we do our um, binding. Set that aside, use those for other projects sometime. And you're going to also square up your edges or your ends of the runner. Okay. You can see how nice our back looks. Okay, I'm going to just square up the last edge. Trash, throw that one away. Now, the next thing I, I want we want to talk about since we're we're gonna uh, get into the binding aspect, I'm going to cut strips. So before I cut the strips, I want you to be aware you have to measure around the distance around your table runner. Okay, with that information, you're going to cut binding strips, three inch wide binding strips. Okay, and you can see three inch, or three inches wide. One, one, two, three, three inches wide. And then you're going to take those strips and you're going to piece it together. Okay, uh, I use two different um, lengths of the or widths of the fabric, and I bound it together. Right here is my binding section. You can see how it's bound together with a quarter inch stitch. Okay, and then I took it to my ironing board and I pressed it see how I pressed it wrong sides together with the raw edges even as such okay now what I did is I had it rolled up because I like it when it's rolled, it feeds off very nicely, so I might just go ahead and roll that back up again. Because when I use the binding, uh, the binder, it, it works a lot nicer and you don't have to worry about it, your uh, strip getting tangled. So I'm going to go over to my sewing machine and we're going to set up the binder onto the sewing machine. So if you want to come along with me. Okay. So this is the box that the binder clip, or the binder, uh, comes in. It's a 5 8 inch quilt binder and we're going to go ahead and remove the pieces that come with it. I'm going to set this over off to the side. Okay. The main portion, this is the the binder itself. Okay. What I'm going to do with that is I'm going to open it up. So it looks like that. Okay. I'm going to just set it right up there for the time being. It does come with some great directions as well, so make sure you save those. It also comes with a with a binding foot. Okay. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to go ahead and attach the binding foot at this time. So I'm going to snap off my other foot that I had on there, put on my binding foot, Okay. On this binding foot, it does have a little flange over here. It's kind of like the, the quarter inch uh, um, foot that you have, but it's like this, this little flange is set a little bit further out away from the foot itself, if you can see that right there. Okay. It's about an eighth of an inch out from that. But that, that is all necessary for, for the use uh, of this here particular uh, binding okay 
<laughs> Next thing uh, we have, we also have a little plate. This little plate, what we're going to do is we're going to set it on onto the base of the, the machine itself. Now, with this particular uh, binder, you do need to use the zigzag needle plate. So if you do not have that on at the present time, go ahead and put that on. And what it does is it slides right into place. It, it still is wiggly, so we do have screws and some washers that we're going to utilize here to hold it in place. So make sure you save your little baggies because, you know, you don't want to lose your the screws. You get three screws and then two washers that go with it. Okay. On the back, uh, and you'll see this when you sit down trying to put this on, the back one we're going to go ahead and tighten up the screw so that it's nice and secure. Okay. And then on the next one, uh, we're not going to put these on until we put our binder into position. Okay. Here's the binder. Okay. We're going to go ahead and you can see you have an opening here. It also has a raised section about the same size. So you're going to place it, place that onto that raised section. Now you're going to use your, your washers. Uh, when you put this on, don't put it, uh, screw them on very tightly at this point in time because that's giving us some mobility to move them around. Here, lost the washer. Okay, so go ahead and just tighten the first one loosely, okay? And then go ahead and do the same with the other one. The second washer. Okay. Just gently tighten that down. Okay, so now at this point in time, you, can, you have the flexibility of moving it either to the left or to the right as such. Okay, and this is all going to depend upon your binding strip as well as the, your quilted section or piece that you're going to buy. So one thing I like to do is I'll, I, I get it all set up and then I start my action. So first thing is though, you're going to want to cut... your fabric to a point as such. This helps feed it in through the binder. Okay, you're going to have these little sections. I'm going to set those aside. And now what you're going to do is you're going to take that end point, okay, and the wrong side is going to be facing upward, okay, as you can see here. So wrong side up, you're going to feed it through. And I'm going to get my little tool here to help feed it through. Okay, just poke it through there. Now you can probably see it, my hand's not in the way. So you can see the end coming through. Okay. When the end comes through, you can go ahead and pull it outward or downward. There's also a little there's like a little teeth right here that sticks up. You want to make sure that the end is under of your, uh, the end of the binding stirrup is under that little um, tooth area. Okay. As you can see here, what, what it's doing is it's folding the top edge under. Okay. And the bottom edge does not fold under because we've already pressed that with our iron. So we've got a nice edge there already. So what it also does is, you can see this tooth right here. You can kind of hear it because I'm touching it here with my pokey tool. Okay, I'm touching that little tooth. You want the fabric or that binding fabric to go underneath. And what it does is it turns it under on the top as such like this. And I'm going to come like that. That's what it's going to look like when when you bind or put your um, your quilted or your quilted section your uh, table runner in there, okay? So it's going to 
fold it like that. And the pressure from the presser foot is going to hold it in place as well. Okay, so if you were to lower your presser foot as such, now when you lower your presser foot, I don't know if you can see this or not, but that little edge, that guide on the edge right there in the back side of the foot itself, back here there's this little flange on the side, okay? You want your binding strip to be on the inside of that flange. So to do that, you're going to have to adjust the positioning of this binder right here. As you position it, it's going to move it over. Now, I'm going to raise that foot up again. Okay. Let's lower it back down to see this. Okay. Once you get it into position, then what you can do is you can tighten down these screws. And we may have to loosen them again, depending upon how it, the quilt top will fit in here and how it feeds through there. So I'm going to leave it go as such. Now I'm going to grab hold of my uh, table runner. Now, as you can see, I left a nice, a pretty nice size tail on there, which we're going to leave the tail go. We're not going to cut it off at this time, but we're going to take the runner Okay, and I'm going to raise up my foot again because I want to get back in there. Okay, I'm going to raise that up and I'm going to guide the table runner into that slot. And this will take a little bit of manipulation on your part. So you have to be patient with it when you're first starting out as such. So if you low, raise or lower your presser foot it, you know, as many times as you need to to make sure that that's in there nice and securely. So once you get that position, you know, maybe you need to adjust your screws, maybe you don't. It's kind of, you know, it's kind of like you judging it because you're the only one who's going to be able to see down in there to see where that lines up. So now what we're going to do, we're, I, I like to keep this little tool in my hand because one thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to watch where the needle penetrates into the fabric or into the binding strip itself to make sure that gives us that nice straight line. And um, that way I, can, I have to also watch up here to make sure I'm feeding correctly. And before we go any further, I also wrap this around as such to keep the bias, you know, free from, uh, you know, any kinks or whatever. So this makes it for, makes for a nice even feed, okay? So I'm going to just lower my presser foot and see if that's where I want my needle to penetrate. Right now it's about, <clears throat> it's a little bit more than an eighth of an inch from this edge over here on the left side of the bias binder, okay? But I think I still need to adjust my fabric ever so slightly. So until you get your fabric adjusted properly and make sure your, um, your binding, the edge of it, is on the inside of that little flange that's to the right of the foot itself. Okay, so let me just check and see how that's looking. If I lower my presser foot down, oops, see what happened is uh, it's not quite lined up, so we might have to adjust these little dudes. So you can unscrew them as to push it in, I think. Okay. So I just want you to take your time when you're first lining this up. Tighten the screws down. Okay. Because once you get that lined up, you're you're gonna good, gonna be good to go, you know. Let's see. Let's lower that down. And we may have to stitch over this when we come back, when we come around to the back side, just to make sure that that's all 
ready to go. Okay. I think what's going on here, I don't think I still have a really good fold over on the back side. So I'm going to just remove that a second here. As you, you can see what's, what's going to happen. It folds over and you want it to be even with the back side of that bias strip. Okay? Okay. You can pull it back through until you get that set. Okay, it's still a little off. I think I'm going to readjust these dudes again. Let's go and see if that works. Something like that. Okay. Okay, let's try it again. Raise up my presser foot. Slide this in. And did you notice where I started with the binding? I started pretty much in the center or so uh, of the uh, of the table runner along the center edge. Here again, we need this tool. I think. Press that down. Okay. <clears throat> I think I'm about ready. Let's see. Okay, we're going to take a few stitches here. I'm going to just lower my needle there because I want to turn it over to the back side. It's actually doing pretty nice. Okay, so um, since we've given it that that once over, make sure everything is lined up. We're going to go ahead and make sure that that flange on the back is even with the side of the binding that's feeding out from the unit itself. I would go relatively at a slow pace. Okay, and make sure this is feeding properly. You want to make sure that you unwind from your little roll as needed. Okay, when you get to the corner, go ahead and stitch off the corner. Now, what I'm going to do is go ahead and raise the presser foot, okay? And I'm going to pull that section off. You can see how that looks. And here's the back side. Oh, it looks great. Okay. Now what we have to do is we have to turn a corner there. But we want to turn a co corner at a 45 degree angle. Okay, I'm going to cut this thread. Oop. Pull a little extra out if you need to. There. Now what I did is I went a little bit beyond that edge. So I want to make sure that I cut it even so that the edge of the stitch is even with the edge of the, of the, the runner itself, okay? Now, next thing, okay, I'm going to take this and I'm going to create like little wings. Fold it so that it comes up as such, creating that little wing pattern that you can see right there. Now with this, this is going to create my 45 degree angled corners. Okay, 
So first things first, I'm going to get out my little glue stick pen. And I'm going to put a little glue on the front edge. And I'm going to just make sure I have my 45 degree angle going for me. And secure it. Press it down to hold it in place. I'm going to repeat this for the back side as well. So put my glue down, holds it in place. And then I'm going to fold it over at a 45 degree angle. Okay, like that. Okay, now to get in there, I still want to continue with the binding around the other edge. Of the I'm going to feed some of this back in there, making sure it's underneath this little tooth that's right here. Let me get my tool. Make sure that this binding is under the tooth because that's what's forming that turned edge. Okay. With that being said, we're going to press this under so that it turns the corner. Okay. Just give it a, a little flossing back and forth here. And that gets it back in its groove so that those edges or that end will turn over. Okay, so now what we're going to do, go ahead and put that under the presser foot. And if you need your tool to hold it in place ever so slightly, go ahead and do that. And then you're going to poke this under that tooth like I mentioned. And pull that a little tight. And you're going to feed as such. And you're going to line up the edge of the binding behind there that's on the quilt with that little flange right back here. Okay, I think we've got it. Going to make sure that everything is adjusted properly. And I think we've got it. We're going to start out slow. Making sure that it's catching the edge of the binding. And you also have that binding strip right here on the inside section of that flange. Okay. I'm just going to go slow still. And you're going to go to the opposite corner and we're going to repeat. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and raise it up. That's how that looks. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and cut this thread again. You're going to bring that out as such. And you're going to create those little angel wings like that. Give it a finger press to hold it in place. Get out your glue stick. Press the front down. And then repeat for this back edge of that binding strip. You're going to fold that over. Okay, just finger press it. And I'd just like to give this a little bit of a finger press here as well. I'm going to feed that back through and under the tooth again. And we're going to pull this out.
Okay, one thing that happened there is that's where my seam is, and so that's why it's making it a little uh, more of a challenge to get that to lay flat in there. But, you know, you're going to work with it, making sure your area or your bias is underneath that little tooth. We're going to lower the presser foot to make sure that that's all in gauged properly. I think we have it. So we're going to go ahead and you can slowly start out with your stitching, making sure everything is engaging properly. Your bias is under the tooth. This is feeding well from over here. And if you need extra binding, make sure you unroll it. Again, going slowly to make sure it's all feeding properly. And right now, the good news is you've got a, a long side that you're binding, so you can go a little faster if you feel a little bit more confident. Oh, making sure everything is right here. It was getting a little close to that flange, so I want to make sure I make that adjustment. Let's just go ahead and look at it to see if it's feeding. Oh, it is. It's feeding great. Okay. So... Coming up to our third corner, so you're going to repeat the same actions. Okay, raise our presser foot. Oops, should have raised my needle first. Pull it out. Okay, we're going to repeat. And going to create your little angel wings here again. your glue stick. I tell you what, the more you do this, the better you're going to get at it. And then you're going to love this because it's it's really it's a time saver. A lot of people say that they don't like to uh, do their bindings. I think that after after you become very very familiar with this binding tool, you're going to love doing bindings. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to push this back under here and we're going to pull it out and we're going to put it back under our presser foot. Okay. All you ever have to worry about is the top, and that's the top side here. This is the side that turns under, and it's turning under right here. So you have to be aware where, um, how that's turning under, making sure that's a nice straight turn for you. Okay. If you have any issues with it coming undone up there, go ahead and take it off like I just did. Putting that back under. I'm going to put my thread underneath there. There we go. Once I lower this presser foot too, you know, it kind of holds everything into position. Except for this section didn't turn under properly because I didn't. Sometimes if you floss it through the through the through the unit itself, it also kind of um, presses that down that area down. 
because this area is giving me troubles this go around. But you know, if you need to do and use some more glue, I think that's what I need here. This glue that I'm using is water soluble, so it will wash away in the laundry, so you won't have any residue left. Okay, let's try this again. I know I feel like I need an extra hand here, but an extra hand wouldn't fit down in that little area. Okay, let's lower it again. Here, I think we're getting it. Okay. This little tool is really handy for getting in there. If you need to raise it ever so slightly, go ahead and raise your presser foot. And I just want to make sure that my binding piece is on the inside of that little flange that I've been talking about here. Okay. And when you first start out, go slow. And I think we're good to go. Okay, let's string right there, want to move it to the back. Okay, we're coming up to our final corner, making sure everything looks good and positioned properly. Okay, we're going to raise the press foot and then go ahead and pull it through. Okay, we're down to our last corner for adjusting. Here again, we're going to create those angel wings that we were talking about earlier. Making that 45 degree angle. Okay. It's back through again. The corner looks a lot better. Okay. Put your thread to the back. Okay. So you floss it like this and it kind of creases this so that you get that that quarter inch fold over. Okay, so now we're going to lower our presser foot, making sure that our bias is under the tooth right here. I'm going to pull it back through gently. Okay, and let's see. Okay, we're just making a couple adjustments there. Okay. Oops, I think I missed there. Let's get our needle. Do that again. Might have to make a slight adjustment there after we're through with our binding. Just tack that down. 
Let's continue on here. Almost done. Okay. Now, when you get to this section, okay, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the glue stick again. I'm just going to tack down this area a little bit so that it stays in place. Okay. The directions don't say to, the written directions don't say to do that, but you know what? I found it helpful. Okay. Okay. Let's continue. I think I'm going to do some of the back side too, just to make sure, because I can't see what's going on back there very easily. So sometimes securing that section because I can't see it is a good thing. Okay. Uh, press that down where I glued it to hold it in place so it doesn't move on me because we're coming up to the very end here and we want to make sure everything is great with our joining the two sections together okay another thing that I do um, right up in here, kind of push this section in because we want it to line up even with the other binding section. Okay, here we go. Let's our presser foot again. Now we're getting really close to the end, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and so I'm going to go a little bit further though. Okay, I'm going to raise up my, and I'm going to pull it out. So you notice, you know, it, it's necessary actually to have extra. I make like uh, 12 inches extra or so you could do, once you begin doing this, you might up to do a little bit longer than that, maybe 18 inches extra on your binding strips. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is gonna go ahead and finish off uh, the edges here. Okay, like that. So I'm going to see I went over the beginning section, so that's all good. I'm going to go ahead and trim this down. I'm going to go like that. Okay. Now, if you have binder clips, this is what I do. I, I fold this under as such. And you're going to be a little bit more careful than I'm being right now. But you're going to iron that. You could press that down to get that a nice... Uh, edge to it and once you get that nice edge to join up you're going to go ahead and clip it with some clips another clip here that's such an over here see we need to get down to that so we have to connect those threads so to do that i'm going to go ahead and remove my binder from the machine itself Make sure you take your washers. Be careful that you don't lose them. I'm going to set them right here in front so that I don't lose them. Go ahead, remove the binder. Okay. Now I'm still going to use that foot with that flange on the side of it there to make sure it's the same distance, okay, away. Make sure my edge is very 
smooth. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and lower the presser foot with the flange with the side of that binder along the inside of that flange. Go ahead and what I like to do is do a couple back stitches here. Yep. And I'm going to join it up with the other stitch line where we had first started sewing. Go ahead and do a reverse to tack it down and lift up your presser foot and cut your threads. You would take it over to your sewing machine and go ahead and give it a good press and your table runner is complete. Okay, so I want to thank you for joining me for this video. Uh, this binder foot, the more you use this binder foot, the more comfortable you will become using it and the better your res end results are going to be as well. So it does take a little practice getting into it, but I think that the binder foot does a really good job and it does save a lot of time. So the next project I'm going to show you is, you know, for the people who are new to this binder foot, maybe you don't like the way that this looks, but you know what we're going to do is we're going to finish it off with with a bead along the that stitch line that we just created, just in case it didn't turn out to your specifications. So until then, I just want to thank you for tuning in to this video, and um, I will catch you on the beading foot to uh, video in uh, in a while. Okay, thank you. We'll see you.